Here now, Fox News contributor DeRoy Murdoch. You really need to watch a large chunk of what he said, DeRoy, to appreciate the depth of his idiocy. But to turn around what he said, John Cougar believes 98% of black Americans live as poorly as slaves did. Yeah, it's an amazing comment. I'll tell you something. 100% of black Americans are better off than slaves. You know why? Because we're not slaves. Let's start with that. I mean, that's an astonishing comment. And this is just a reflection of the attitude on the left, which is black people are poor and backward and pathetic, and they feel so sorry for us, they want to pat us on the heads. It's incredibly condescending. It's remarkably racist, frankly. And, you know, you look at the actual statistics, 50% of black, Amer black Americans in this country make more than $50,000 a year, 20% make more than $100,000 a year. Uh, and then you look at the black success uh, in politics, for example, we've had a black president, we currently have a black Secretary of Defense, the uh, leader of the Democrats in the House is Hakeem Jeffries, one day he may become Speaker of the House. Uh, we've got black mayors running Los Angeles, New York City, Chicago, San Francisco, Atlanta, Washington, D.C., you know, almost all of our major cities, I don't think they're running them well, but you know, they weren't running them during slavery, I mm. promise you that. And so this idea on the part of John Cougar, Mellencamp, and other people on the left is, again, just a condescending attitude towards, bla attitude towards blacks. And I wish John Cougar would stop making stupid comments like this and go back to singing about working class white people. Well, here's the thing. So you just brought a whole bunch of data to the conversation. He's in this conversation with Bill Maher, and he says one to two percent. And, and Bill Maher challenges him and says, what are you talking about? One to two percent? And then he says, well, 10%, whatever. I'm just pulling these numbers out of you know where. What it tells me is yeah. they're not, he and many like him are not bringing any facts to the conversation. They're no bringing facts. factless emotion, and that's what they're trying to base policy on, DeRoy. Well, it's emotion, which is bad enough, but an emotion coupled with ignorance, which is really a terrible combination. Mm. You know, 0% of slaves had college degrees. 26% of black Americans have college degrees. How about that? Uh, and I mentioned people who succeeded in the public sector. You know, the following corporations all had, had or have black CEOs. Uh, Citigroup, uh, Time Warner, American Express, Merck, Merrill Lynch. In fact, uh, the e. Stanley O'Neill, the head of uh, Merrill Lynch, mm -hmm. his father, I believe, was either a sharecropper or a chauffeur. His grandfather was a slave. So the O'Neill family went from slavery to the chairmanship of Merrill Lynch in two generations. I think people like John Cougar Mellencamp should focus on facts like that rather than going on the air and sputtering utter nonsense, which is what he did the other night. I call him John Cougar. He hates that. So that's why I did that. No, no John's called he, John Cougar. He then. also yeah. admitted that he wrote a song called From the Cotton Field to the Playing Field, but he never recorded it. You know, he's part of Farm Aid. They need to change that. And I think almost all farmers in the United States would agree they need to raise money to send this man child to school <laughs> somewhere. So he can learn some basic just thinking skills and just some basic well, facts about America. You mentioned from the cotton field to the playing field. I mean, look, we had Jackie Robinson back in the, I think it was 1948, integrate baseball. It was a beautiful moment in American history. Mm -hmm. And today you've got people like LeBron James making probably, I'm guessing, I guess, $50 million a year plus endorsements. He's probably raking in $100 million a year income. There's no slave making anything close to that. And that's just LeBron James. You've got baseball players. You've got basketball players. You've got uh, all sorts of athletes and all kinds of uh, all sorts of sports. You have entertainers making spectacular kind of income. People and uh, slaves couldn't imagine slave slave owners could imagine imagine that kind of money. You know, Oprah Winfrey is a billionaire, for example, living in a beautiful right. mansion in Montecito. Maybe oh. arguably the most successful. Oh, he was going to he America. was going to educate what, America. What does John Cougar think of that? Yeah, no, oh, the song was about how white people exploit black entertainers and athletes. That's mm. what the song was about, mercifully. I would like to be he, exploited for $100 million a year. Please exploit me for, you know what, you can exploit me for $10 million a year. You know, the, the idea that people in the NFL are exploited is garbage. There are people, thousands of people who trade places with any so-called exploited member of the NFL or the NBA or any major sports league. Mm. These people make tons of money in their salaries, and they make lots of money in endorsements, and guess what? They're doing something they love to do. Lucky them. So much for exploitation. 
He's so irretrievably moronic, you almost feel sorry for him at the end of that stupid podcast. Meantime, it looks like Staten Island's had it with the massive influx of migrants thanks to New York's destructive progressive policies. And now New York Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis is renewing calls for the borough to secede. I hate that word from the city of New York and form its own city. All of this while New York City Mayor Eric Adams, well, he's passing the buck on the burgeoning migrant crisis. We need the national government to stand up. This is not a New York City issue. This is a national issue. So don't critique what we've done. Don't tell us how we could have done it better. So what's the Biden administration doing? Well. Not much as of yet, but they did suggest New York house migrants at these 11 locations scattered around the Northeast. DeRoy, I listened to Mayor Adams and he says, will you guys send us more money? We need more money. And I think he can yell about that. He can pound the table all he wants, but there is no way more money will do anything except necessitate more money. DeRoy. Yeah, well, what he ought to be doing is screaming at Joe Biden saying, close the damn border. We've got these people invading our country, breaking in. We have no idea who these people are. I'm sure some of them want to come here and work. Some of them may be destructive people. Some of them, um, some of them unwittingly may be coming in with diseases. I don't think we're testing them for COVID while we're talking about maybe putting masks back on American citizens. Uh, right now, New York City's unemployment rate is 5.3%. Uh, that's about 50% higher than the U.S. unemployment rate of 3.5%. Yet Kathy Hochul and Eric Adams are trying to figure out how to get work papers so these illegal aliens right. who invaded our country can take jobs. Now, how about working on the American citizens in New York City, people who are homeless, homeless veterans, mm -hmm. and see if we can create some economic opportunity for them. These are American citizens who are citizens of this country, and if we're going to spend any time or money or effort to help people, it ought to be people in New York City who are American citizens, not people whose first act in this country was to break our mm -hmm. laws. Mm -hmm. These liberals never thought that these migrants would show up in New York City is what happened. Thank you, DeRoy. Great well, to see you. Well, they don't think. That's the problem is they don't think. Great right. to see you. Thank you.